Right, today I'm going to show you how to make this cute mini pumpkin using Tunisian crochet. I absolutely love making these. They are so much fun and this is a super easy pattern to adapt. So for this size pumpkin, uh, I'm going to show you the measurements that you need to do as well as how many stitches I used and then how we do the little stem. To make this today, you're going to need your main color yarn. So I'm using Loops and Threads, which is the Michaels brand. I am using a worsted weight yarn. You can use any weight yarn you'd like um, to get to the uh, length and width that I'm going to show you today. And then you can also adjust from there. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But I'm going to use this orange for my main color and this green for my contrast color. And then I'm also going to be using a size K 10.5, see if it'll focus, hook, which is a 6.5 millimeter hook. Um, just use the hook that you like best with the yarn that you're using. I find that the K Tunisian hook generally works best for me with worsted weight yarn. And then I've got a standard crochet hook for the stem. I'm using a size H. See if it'll let you see that. Um, for the stem, I believe that is a five millimeter hook. And you'll also need a tape measure, some scissors, one of these cute, and a uh, tapestry needle for seaming. All right, so let's get started. For this little pumpkin, I started with a chain of 30. This could change based on your gauge um, or size yarn you're using. For a worsted weight, sorry, you're gonna hear the little sounds of the hook on the table. Um, and my gauge was the, let me see if I can do that so it doesn't make quite as much noise. Um, my gauge in this yarn, 30 stitches worked well for me. We're gonna be chaining till about 10 inches. The proportions that I have found work best for this pumpkin is um, your width, it's gonna be half of your length. So you're gonna be making a little rectangle. Let's see how many I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. All right, so do eight more stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, and I'm gonna measure that out. My tape measure. Which have about 10 inches. Now, if you're using something like the Tunisian Simple Stitch or the Tunisian Knit Stitch, anything where you don't have to have, yeah, we're at about 10 inches. Looks pretty good. Um, which is, you want to know in centimeters. Flip those over for you real quick. It's probably going to be about, what, 25? It's 2.54 centimeters in an inch. Uh, about 25 centimeters. Um, where was I going with that? If you are using a stitch pattern that does not require a certain number of stitches, like it's not a repeat of two chains plus one or anything like that, it doesn't really matter how many chains you have as long as um, the length works for you. And like I said, if I wanted to make a bigger pumpkin than this and I wanted to do 20 inches instead of 10, I would then just crochet up 10 inches instead of five, which is what we're gonna be doing today. So for the Tunisian Simple Stitch, we're gonna be skipping this first chain right here. We're gonna be pulling up a loop and all of the back bumps and working our way down the chain. I find that if you do a slightly looser chain than you might be used to, it makes this step a lot easier. 
And then once I get down all the way to the end, I'll be doing my return pass. So pulling up a loop all the way down, I will meet you at the end. All right, I have gotten to the end. Pulling up, and I don't remember if I said it before, but we're pulling up in the back bump of all of these stitches. Um, you don't often see that in traditional crochet, but in Tunisian it does help you get a nice flat, even bottom. But I have also done this in traditional crochet. All right, so then we're gonna do the return pass. So I've yarned over, I'm gonna pull it through the first loop, yarn over, pull through all, or pull for the next two loops and do that all the way down our row. Okay. Two, two, I'm sorry, let me move that. I love this Tunisian hook. Um, it's a uh, chai goo, but the little, little wooden bead on the end uh, is not super conducive to working on a flat surface and not having a lot of sound. All right, so I'm reaching the end of the first row. Beautiful. So now we have our foundation row for our pumpkin. Yay. I'm doing mine in Tunisian Simple Stitch. That is what I used for this pumpkin. So I'm going to be inserting my hook into the front bar yarning over, pulling up a loop, insert to the front bar, yarn over, pull up the loop, work all the way down. I think I can do this pretty quickly without having to break the video. And then at the very end, I'm gonna remind you how you do the last Tunisian stitch. This is a little different than the other ones. Part of me in making these pumpkins really wants to make some like tiny fingering weight ones or sock weight ones out of some scraps. I think that would be super cute. Oh my goodness, can you imagine tiny crochet pumpkin earrings? Whew, might need to make that a reality. That would be super cute. All right, so I'm almost at the end. Spread out my work. And again, I had a base of 30 stitches, so 29. And then for our last stitch, instead of just going into the front bar, like we did on all the other ones, we're actually gonna go through both sides. Let's see if I can show you right there. Pull up a loop to give us a nice clean edge. Yarn over, go through one, and then go all the way down. So I'm gonna do a total of 10 rows which will give me five inches of height based on my gauge in this stitch. If I were gonna do a different stitch, like the Tunisian knit stitch, those stitches are usually a little bit shorter, so I might need a few extra rows. But the main thing that I would encourage you to focus on is how many inches you have. So whatever the width of your pumpkin, so like how tall you are crocheting, like how many rows you're doing, it's going to be half of the length. And with that, I will meet you right back here after I do 10 rows. Okay, so I have done my 10 rows. So let me measure real quick. All right, so looks like I stretch it little bit, meh, I'm right under, right under five rows, or right under five inches. But I know that when I seam up the sides, it's gonna pull it tight, so I'm gonna leave it there. Um, so, 10 rows of 30 stitches each, Tunisian Simple Stitch. I did my last return pass. So now I'm going to do a slip stitch bind off. So I'm gonna go in the front bar, yarn over, pull it through both loops, yarn over, pull it through both loops. 
hold it better. Yarn over, pull it through both loops. You can see how that finishes it off really nicely. And it helps just like with the chains at the beginning of your work to do this a little bit loosely. Um, I definitely used to do a much, much tighter bind off and then wondered why my ends were crazy curly. I will also say that for this pumpkin project, because you are seaming it and stuffing it, um, you do not need to block it. No reason to. So it is okay that it is a little curly. Go all the way down to the end. And then once we get to the end of our work, we are going to cut our yarn and leave a long tail for seaming. I don't think I mentioned this earlier in the video, but you will also need something to stuff your pumpkin with. I am just using polyfill. Um, you could use scrap yarn. You could use scrap fabric. Um, whatever your heart desires for a nice filling for your pumpkin. All right, and then for my last stitch, I'm gonna do like I did before, going through both of the ends. If I don't lose my stitch, my goodness. All right, so for the tail, we're gonna be seaming up the short side and the long side, but we're gonna be gathering it up as we do that. So just pull like about, I don't know, an arm's length maybe and a half of yarn. Then going to pull it through my slip knot. And we are now done with the Tunisian hook. So you can put that aside. Now we're going to seam our two short sides together. Now, I think that the mattress stitch works the best for a nice clean seam. You could do a whip stitch, but I'm gonna do mattress stitch on this. So for the mattress stitch, you're gonna go in both sides or in between what looks like the chains on the end. You're gonna do that on this side too. Weaving back and forth down the short side. I love this stitch for garments. I honestly use this stitch now for seaming pillows and things like that. It just gives you a lovely line. It also does a pretty good job of hiding the color that you are using to seam in the work itself. So you don't have a line of, you know, a bright white scrap yarn in your, I don't know, black yarn project, for an example. Once we get to the bottom though, it will not matter as much what we do or how we how we seam it together as we gather it. Make a nice little tube here first. Okay, almost done at the end here. Just a couple more stitches. All right, and this little guy is gonna get tucked in too. All right, so we've got our beautiful seam right there. We've got our little tube. Now we're gonna do the bottom. Actually, I don't remember if this ends up being the bottom or the top. So for this, honestly what I do as I am closing up the hole is I just go from side to side dividing, like dividing the tube in on itself many times. So you see, I went from this side to that side and then come from this side to this side. I'm gonna come from here to here. 
You could also go around the edge and like pick up every two stitches or so and gather it like that. I find that this works pretty well and is generally strong enough to hold up well. The other nice thing that since this is a closed, I don't know, basically ball that we're making, we can just leave all of our long ends on the inside. All right, so you just wanna test it, make sure you can't poke any fingers through any gaps. I can't, so then I'm going to kind of knot it once on the outside and then I will do the same on the inside. I am always worried that my work is gonna become undone. So I'm gonna flip it inside out. And then I'm going to tie off the <laughs> inside. And that beeping that you hear is my daughter's baby monitor. So that means that I will catch up with you in just a few <laughs> minutes after I get her up from her nap. We'll just tuck that in right there and I'll show you how to stuff it and finish it off in just a few minutes. Okay, I'm back a couple of hours later. My husband playing with our daughter in the basement. So if you hear any fun sounds, that was probably what that is. So when I left, we had seamed up the short side and we had cinched in the bottom of our pumpkin. So I'm gonna grab some just generic polyfill and I will say for your pumpkins, you don't want to overstuff them. Um, then you'll see some of the polyfill kind of trying to escape through the sides. When I stuff the pumpkins, I usually kind of like to make a donut shape with the stuffing inside the pumpkin. Just makes it a little easier to form into a pumpkin shape. So now for the top, we're going to be cinching this closed and then also doing our um, yarn wraps to make the pumpkin shape. So I'm going to take a couple of arm lengths of yarn. If I can find my end. There we go. So one, two, I'll do three for good measure. Probably won't need nearly that much. And then grab my tapestry needle and cinch up the top. And I will largely cinch up the top like I did the bottom. So... We'll start with one with one side. Sorry, I can hear my husband singing to our daughter. Um, I'm going to cinch it in the middle, tie, I don't know, kind of just loosely double knot this and then tuck the end on the inside. You can knot it however you wish. It doesn't have to be fancy. And then again, I'm just gonna go back and forth over the ends, cinching it in. It doesn't have to look particularly pretty or neat because one side is gonna be the bottom where it's resting and no one's really gonna see it unless they pick it up and look at the bottom. And the other side, we're gonna cover up a little bit with the stem. For the stem, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Some people use a cinnamon stick and if you do use the cinnamon stick, I suggest when you are gathering up the top like this, to stick your cinnamon stick in there first and then um, cinch it around that. I have not done that method before. I'm gonna show you the way that I always do it. If I don't yank the yarn ball completely off. And again, just cinching it closed doesn't need to be perfect and as you can see it's um, kind of a squatty shape it is not a perfectly round ball we did not overstuff it all right so the way that I do it is I divide my pumpkins into sixes as you can see on the top and the way that we're going to do that here is we're going to just wrap our yarn around I usually do like two full times then I stop in the middle, turn it, wrap it one, two, half turns, 
and then turn it again. One, two, there we are. And we, that's pretty good on the length of yarn, didn't have a crazy amount of extras. And so now I'm going to come in and put my needle like under all of the wraps that I've just done to kind of cinch them together a couple of times, rotating my work a little bit. All right, and then I'm going to kind of go under just a random wrap, pull the yarn through, knot it a few times. And then the way I usually do it is I will, with my needle, still with the yarn, I will just stick it through my work, pull it all the way through, and then clip the end, fluff it back out, and then the end is tucked on the inside. So we now have our pumpkin shape. It looks cute, it just needs a stem. There are a multitude of ways that you could do the stem. You could make it separately and then seam it on. Like I said, I'm going to show you the way that I always do it. We are now done with our tapestry needle. We can put that aside as well and pull out our traditional crochet hook. And honestly, the size of the crochet hook, not super important. I would say you would want to lean towards a tighter gauge rather than a looser gauge for the hook size that you use. I use very, very little yarn for this. So um, after you finish your pumpkin, you can kind of decide which side you want to be the bottom, which side you want to be the top. I think probably this side is what I want for the bottom. I think that side looks a little neater. So I'm now going to take my traditional crochet hook and I'm just going to insert it into some stitches towards the middle of my work in one of the six quadrants, or one of the six quadrants. Pull up some yarn, chain one, leaving myself a nice tail to crochet over, or really to tuck into the middle. And I'm gonna single crochet into the work once per quadrant. This is probably the trickiest part of the whole pumpkin. <laughs> this is crocheting the stem right on there, but it does keep you from having to seam it, which for me would be a little bit trickier. So I've done it once in that one. I'm just gonna pick up some stitches right here. The next one, yarn over, single crochet there, pull out some more yarn, do it in our third quadrant, fourth, I hope that you can see Kind of what I'm doing here. That was four. Get that tail out of the way. Five. And six. All right. So we've now crocheted around once. And then I'm just gonna start, sorry, I bumped my stand. I'm just gonna start crocheting in a spiral right onto the tops of the single crochets that I did before. So there's the top of that single crochet. For the first round, I'm gonna go about one stitch every stitch. So I'll have six single crochets in this round. Go into the top of the next one, go on the top of the next one. And if you miss a stitch, not a big deal because you're going to be decreasing anyway. I've got two more. Two. Nope, that's in the same stitch. There we go. All right, and then on this next round, I'm just gonna crochet into every other one. So 
I'll just have three. One, two, three. Hopefully you can see that there. And then I end with a slip stitch, doesn't really matter into where. Cut the yarn, pull it through, leading yourself a long tail. Well, relatively long tail. I usually knot it once or twice. And then I insert my hook into the stem, pull that tail through. All the way right there. Pull it down a little bit more. Snip that end. Do the same with this end. Just kind of pull it through the stem a little bit so the end stays tucked in. The inside of your work. Pull it through. That's it. And with that, we have a finished Tunisian. Pumpkin. If you like this video, if you found it helpful, let me know in the comments down below. If there are some other crafty things you want me to make, let me know too, and I will be happy to take those in consideration. Happy fall, y'all. See y'all next time. Bye.